Hello friends, in today's video we're gonna be seeing how we can track every single request with correlation IDs. We're gonna be reading the request through custom headers through different ways and we're gonna be returning it back to the user after we have done any types of processing to it. I'm Muhammad and if you learn to learn more about .NET, AWS and Azure, make sure you like this video and subscribe. Now let's jump into the code. So what I have here is I have a very simple web application and within this web API I have a single endpoint and basically it's called simple extract and it returned a success. So if I run my code and I go to my web browser to check it, we can see it has a single endpoint. If I click on try it out, we're going to be getting here a single success. But for the sake of this video, for the rest of this video, I'm going to be utilizing Postman to do all of these requests. So let's go to Postman and inside Postman, we have this simple information here. We're going to see, click on send, click on the body of the response. We got a 200 and we got a success. So what we want to do right now here is we want to build up this action in order for us to actually read an incoming header. So how we can do that? So we're going to be experimenting with different ways where we can actually read the headers. So the first way we're going to do it, let's stop my application. We're going to be writing the following. So we're going to tap into the request. We're going to go to the headers and we're going to put try get value. Then we're going to specify the header name and I'm just going to put x dash correlation dash ID. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to output a string. So I'm going to put out var, I'm going to put ID. And basically what I want to do right now is I'm just going to log it out. So I'm going to put logger, log information, and I'm going to put here correlation ID. And I'm going to add this here. It's going to be ID and let's add a dollar sign here. Okay, perfect. So now that I have this one here, basically what I'm doing is I'm relying on something called correlation ID. And correlation ID is something that the front end will send or any types of services that want to communicate with my API will send in order for me to be able to have a traceability of that request. And I can utilize this uh, correlation ID or this incoming ID that I'm being sent to me in order for me to keep a track of all of the different requests and to be able to check on the status of those requests. So in this example here, what I'm doing is I'm requesting, I'm trying to read from an incoming request, something called a correlation ID. And in case it exists, I'm logging it out to my logger. So now if I run this, and I will go to Postman. Now what I'm going to do here, I have already added my correlation ID here, and I added some random value here. So if we change this to one, two, three, four, five, six, for example, click on send, we can see I still got my 200. But if I go back to Rider, and check here, we can see here inside my logs, I got the correlation ID one, two, three, four, five, six. So now if I change this, for example, I can put, for example, ML, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, for example, send the request, we got a success, and now we can see that I got my correlation ID. So this is the first way where I can actually extract information out of the header. But this is not the only way. So what happened, for example, if I want to send multiple items, so I want to send a correlation ID, and I want to send, for example, a trace ID. So I can put X dash trace dash ID, and I can put, for example, here, let's say TR, like that. How can I read both of them at the same time? So we can do it like this, but as you can imagine, this can become a bit quite complicated to manage on the long run. So what I can do is I can go to models, I can add a new model, and I can call this, for example, print CTO. And within this reference TTO, we can see here that I have two correlation ID and I have a trace ID. What I can do here is I can put two properties as type string. I can put correlation ID and I can put here trace ID. In order for me to make this work, what I need to do is I need to add some parameters. And these parameters, they're going to play a crucial role. So the first one is going to be from header. And what I want to do here is I want to specify the header name. And I'm going to take this here as well. So the first one is going to be the correlation ID. So I'm just going to put it here. And the second one is going to be my trace ID. So now I have a much better way to reference this. So then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this reference CTO and I'm going to create a new endpoint. So we can just keep a track of all of the different ways. It's going to be also HTTP GET. This will work also with POST, but for simplicity's sake, I'm putting it with GET. We're going to put a route. I'm going to call it simple DTO extract, and we're going to put as a public I action result and same name, simple DTO extract. And this is going to be the interesting part. So rather than having it as empty here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put from header and I'm going to specify my DTO that I just created and I'm just going to call it reference. And then what I can do is I'm just going to return the same thing. So I'm just going to log them out and here. For the correlation ID, I'm going to utilize my reference dot correlation ID. And for the trace ID, also I'm going to put trace and I'm going to add here trace ID. So now that I have these, let's stop my application and let's run it again. And now my application is running. I can go to my postman and I'm going to send this request. I'm going to update my endpoint to have simple DDO extract rather than simple extract. And I'm going to click on send. We got a success. And if I come back here, 
we can see I was able to get my correlation ID as well as my having to trace ID relying on the DTO that I created. And as we can see here, this is a very good way for me to combine different headers that I need to process and in order for me to extract them directly rather than to having to hard coding them like this inside every single request, I can rely on the DTO in order for me to do those mappings and actually utilize them. And as we can see here within this attribute that I have added, I was able to actually specify the name of the header that I wanted to, and I was able to utilize it inside my controllers. So now that we have explored two simple ways where we can actually extract the header and utilize them, let's see another way where we can actually rely on an action attribute in order for me to process the header before it actually hits the action. So what I'm going to do here inside my services, I'm going to be creating a new class. And in this class, I'm going to call it custom header attribute. And basically what I need to do once this class has been created, I need to inherit from the action filter attribute. And inside here, what I need to do is basically I need to tap into the request or the context of that request and basically pull down the headers. And the way I do that is basically by relying on the on action creating. And as we can see, we have an override for it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rely on the on, ac on action executing. And based on that, what I'm doing here is when the action is executing before it actually hits the action, I'm going to actually tap into the context and get the response back. So the way I do that is pretty straightforward. So I can put context, HTTP context, request, headers, try get value. And again, I'm going to just copy paste the name of this, which is going to be x.correlation ID rather than typing it again. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get an out object. So I'm going to put out var, I'm going to call it ref or basically correlation. And what I'm going to do here in case it exists, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add it to a list of items that I can refer to it. So what I'm going to put here, I'm going to put context, HTTP context, items, and I'm going to attach it to my correlation ID item. I'm going to say equal to the correlation ID that I extracted. So that way, once this request hit the action, I'm extracting it from the header and I'm attaching it to the context for that request within the item. So I don't have to rely on the headers anymore. And this will help me serve this information throughout the life cycle of my request rather than just only having it inside the header, which I could lose after it has been processed by the action itself. So in this way, what I can do in order for me to utilize it right now, I can just go back to my controller I'm going to create a new one. I'm just going to copy paste the first one from, uh, for simplicity's sake. And I'm going to rename it to custom attribute or custom extract, custom attribute extract. I'll put it here. And what I'm going to do here is instead of relying on the headers itself, what I want to do is I want to rely on the items. So here I'm just going to put items with HTTP context items. And the last thing that I need to do is I'm going to copy paste my custom header name. I can call it whatever I want, but this is the one that I chosen and I need to refer to it here and I need to add the reference for it. So now basically what I did is I told this action that it needs to refer to this attribute that I created in order for it to work. And in order for us to check it out, I'm just going to put a breaking point here and a breaking point here. So we're able to see the order of this execution. So now that we run this, I'm going to copy the name of this action and we're going to go to postman. I'm going to update it here and I'm going to remove the trace ID for now. I'm just going to send the correlation ID and I'm going to click on send. So now once we clicked on send, what happened here? As we can see, it went directly to the attribute first. It got the request, it got the correlation ID and then it saved it into the items and now it to the action and then through this action here, it got the information and then it showed it inside the logger. So now within this, if I go here to the console, we can see that for some reason it's not showing. Let's try that again. Send the request. We can see the value is coming to the items. And if we go to the console, we can see here I'm getting the information as needed. Okay, great. So now we can see here that it's actually working and I'm actually able to extract the information that's needed. And I just realized that I have a spelling mistake. Okay, perfect. So now that I have done this and we have explored how we can actually rely on custom headers to extract the information out, what I need to do next is I'm going to be checking how I can actually rely right now on a middleware. We're not going to be on an attribute and not on the custom implementation inside an action, but actually a middleware in order for me to capture this. And this is going to be also pretty straightforward. So the first thing that I need to do inside my services I'm going to create a new class. I'm going to call it custom header middleware. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to specify my request delegate. So it's going to be private 
read only request delegate is going to be a request i'm going to initialize it with the constructor and now that i have initialized it i'm going to utilize the invoke in sync which is going to be public async task invoke async and it's going to take the http context and basically what i want to do here is i want to introduce the logic that i want in order for me to process the headers and it's going to be almost the same thing as this one so i'm just going to copy paste it from here and add it here and instead of relying on this http context because that's already the http context i'm just going to update it for to this and lastly i need to pass the request from our middleware to continue to the other middlewares and the way I do that is I put a wait and I did a typo here. This needs to be next, not request. So let's fix this. Next, next, and next. Await underscore next and pass the context. That's all I need to do. So basically what I did here is inside my pipeline, which is going to be for my middleware, what I did is I captured the header, I put it inside items, and then I let the request process. So now I have done this. How can I actually utilize this? Pretty straightforward. I just need to take the name of my custom middleware go to my program.cs. So what I need to do here is after the builder.build, .build, what I need to do is I need to put up, use middleware. And then here, what I need to do, I need to specify that custom middleware that I just created, fix the references. And now every single request that's going to be coming in, it's going to have this custom middleware implemented onto it. So if I go back to my controller and I remove the custom header, I should be able to still get my correlation ID here uh, shown, uh, shown up because the middleware will take care of actually processing this. So now if I execute this, as we can see, it's commented out. I go back to Postman, and what I'm gonna do here is, I'm just gonna put here random number at the end, so I can put, for example, 009, so we know it's different. Click on Send, get the success, go back to Rider, and we can see here, I was able to get the correlation ID as I have provided it before with a 009 at the end. So because of this, the middleware has been executed. And if I want to trace it, I can go back here, put my breaking point, go back to Postman and execute again. And now we can see here, it went to the middleware. It did the logic that it needs to do. And then if we go to console, we'll be able to see that the correlation ID is appearing. Okay, perfect. So one last item that we need to cover today is now my request has been processed with my action. I have done whatever I need to do with that request and I was able to get the information that's needed. But now how can I return it back to the user in order for them to continue processing with that correlation ID or to any service that's actually utilizing this? And this is gonna be also pretty straightforward. There's gonna two ways which I'm gonna be showing you. So let's see the first one. So I'm gonna go here back to my controller and the way where I can do that is by basically adding the following http context dot response dot headers dot append and then here i can specify the header name and it's going to be the same as before x dash correlation id and i can specify the value which is going to be id and here it needs to be a string so i can just make this to string so now what i can do i can just run my code and go back to postman now if you take a look at here at the headers before i executed before we did not have any correlation ids available for me on the response but now if I click on send and we can see similarly as before, that's when we remove the breaking point, let it execute. And now on the response back, we can see I got the correlation ID returned back to me. So if I change this, for example, from, I don't know, from nine to 10, execute this, we can see my correlation ID has been returned as well to me. So this is one way of doing it by actually appending to the last of the request. There's a different way where you can actually also rely on middlewares in order for me to do so. So what I need to do is inside my services, I'm gonna be creating a new class. So there's a different way where I can actually rely on attributes in order for me also to write this. And this is one of many, but attributes quite, were quite simple. So I'm just gonna create a new class. I'm gonna call it return custom header attribute so what i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna rely on the result filter attribute and there's gonna be a method that i'm gonna be leveraging which is gonna be on result executing and this is gonna be a method that's gonna be inherited from the result filter attribute and i'm gonna override it so what i need to do is i need to add context http context request header because this is what i'm gonna be utilizing I'm gonna take the headers and I'm gonna extract it. It's gonna be my correlation ID. I'm gonna put it in a var, which is gonna be called, actually let's put directly in a string, which is called correlation ID, let's put it in a var. And then what I'm gonna do is just simply, whatever I have done here inside my controller to return it, I'm just gonna take this. I'm gonna completely remove it from here, go back to my return custom header, add it here. 
So we just need to add contacts here before. And here I'm going to return my correlation ID rather than the ID. And now basically with this, I'm able to actually directly return the response. So I'm just going to copy this from here and I'm going to attach it here to my request. I'm going to add it. Here. And now let's check this in action. So now if I execute my application, I run my application and I go to Postman. I'm just going to update this to, let's say, 13 or 14. I'm going to click on send. Now we can see the request has went and then I got back the response and everything that has been occurred is because of my custom header, which is going to be attaching the response back to the result that I needed. I can even remove this and it will still work. So if I comment this out and stop my application and run it again, if we go back to Postman, click on send, click on send, and we can see the result is actually popping up. I can just add A here, for example, and we can see it's actually updating. So this has been a quick video on how we can actually utilize custom headers in order for us to track our request how we can read those custom headers from our code in different ways, either through attributes, through middlewares, or through custom implementation. If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. It will really have that channel. As well, if you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.